Hey everyone, John Doyle from Optics EQ, and I thought uh, with opening day almost upon us in Saratoga, we take a look at the early double on the 11th, Thursday opening day. Excited about that, excited about using the new platform to actually handicap these races. So let's have some fun, dig in. You can see the number of entries, ton of entries. I think it's 134 in total, 11 races. Yeah, obviously there'll be scratches with MTOs and AEs and maybe weather, but still. Uh, just a great card and a very difficult handicapping card. Just a, just a, if you, if you love handicapping, uh, you'll have some fun, especially with, I think with the new platform. And I'm going to show you kind of the ways I kind of trigger myself and what things I use to at least start where I'm going to go and then kind of finish. And that's what we're going to do. I, cause I think the first race, especially, I think there's a couple of 20 to one shots in one line that potentially can outrun their odds. And I want to explain why I think that. Because I just think it's a wide open race. Second race, I'm a little bit more honed in on a horse, but let's go through it. Let's pull up the plot for the first race. You can see the first race plot fit is a red. And the first thing I notice about this is that we have these four horses that are going to be vying for the early lead. Three, four, set, five, and seven. At least they're going to want to because that's just the way they run. That's what that is up there. The, the horses, the way they want to run is their run style okay so they may not plot that way and you can see in the case of the five the seven the four they're kind of well off the for at least the way they plot is off the pace okay so if you look at the only e-horse that's really kind of with the pace is the number three and he's kind of alone here in the surface distance plot all the way to the left now he is well below uh, the top, and that means generally means he's got a kind of a disadvantage in terms of the second call. But in these types of races, if you can kind of establish a lead and back the pace up, there's a horse that you know maybe could outrun his odds. He's twenty to one in the morning line, and I'll get in a little bit more with him. He's a little bit slow, but anytime you get a kind of pace dynamic like this in a race that's I think chaotic, you we just want to look at it. Just want to look at it and see uh, if he if he catch everything now. The thing is, is one of these other horses may decide to go today, the five, four, seven, and make it a little bit more e difficult for him to kind of establish an easy lead and anchor down. But still, something to consider in this race is the pace advantage of three, and we'll get more into it. Uh, the, the case I really want to make for a horse is the number two, and I'm going to go to the grid to do that. But I'm going to also show you why I think this race in general is, I'm going to click the grid notes. And again, for people kind of just using maybe the platform application for the first, second, third time, you can really get around in the selector, right, uh, by just staying right here. You don't have to go back out like you used to in the beginning uh, with the old version. And then you can arrow back to get to anywhere you want, arrow forward. So just a little bit more flexibility, just easier. If you do want to create another tab, you can just duplicate the tab and then go and have two tabs if that's what you want. But you don't won't have to worry about having like these 10, 12 tabs open anymore. Okay, why do I think this race is chaotic? Well, the first thing I'm going to show you is let's look at the last 365 days of these horses. And I'm going to, I'm going to sort by speed figure. And you can see that the, the light green means that those horses are in range today's optics fig range, which is 88 to 94. So you see a lot of horses capable of running within today's optics fig range. So let's narrow it down to 180 days. Notice the number of horses fitting that range goes down. Let's go to the last 90 days. There's no horse that fits the range. In fact, the light red means that they're uh, below. Dark red means they're well below. And then if we go to the last 45 days with these horses run, you can see that most of them are well below today's optics fig range. What does that tell me? Is that tells me it's really kind of chaotic. We don't know how these horses are coming into this race. So it's a race that you want to take a chance. You want to take a look at the race and see if you can kind of, if you have something that can maybe give you a little bit of an edge and maybe get a price on a long shot or at least get a long shot, be able to get into the uh, exotics. So I'm going to clear the filters. I'm going to clear everything. I'm going to start a little bit over here and I'm going to focus in on the number two. I'm not going to go through every horse in this race, but I am going to go through uh, the two and the three, because those are two 20 to one shots, I think have a chance to outrun their odds. I think the two has a much better chance, but let's see it. Okay. So the first thing to notice is the last speed figures versus 81. Now it is below today's 988 to 94, but as we said, so is everyone else. 
So there, and in fact, so he's close. I mean, he ranks closely. And if you go to the right, this is something that we added. It's really kind of a culmination of the speed um, speed class plot that we that we plot the summary, and what this tells me in today's race, coming to today's race, this horse is average plus above average in terms of speed. So relative to the other horses in the race, he's a, above average. Not bad to have for a twenty to one shot, right? So I'm not worried about the eighty one. I'm looking for it. Can he potentially improve? I'm looking for some form cycle stuff. Well. He's second off a layoff. And let's look at this horse's second off the layoff right now. Again, we put alerts in the grid so you can kind of get a feel for going into the race. Where was this horse kind of in his form cycle? Hopefully, I would like to add a lot more alerts going forward. So we'll just be aware of that. That's something that I think are, are really powerful. Again, I'm using the silver plan. So silver plan includes optics notes and, and includes a lot of these things. So I just want to make that point. So if you want to go look and compare it and see what I'm doing. You're going to need the silver plan to do that. Okay, so let's look at second off a layoff. Uh, second off a layoff here. Okay, so this horse is second off a layoff. He improved 10 speed points, okay, that time. Second off a layoff here. This horse improved 75 to 83. You know, you had some scratches in between, eight points. Second off a layoff, 75 to 94, improved 21 points, okay? 82 to 76. This horse went down, but look, this horse had trouble. So you can see a pattern here. This horse does run very well second off a layoff. That's a really good thing. Okay, let's look at this horse's suitability to the distance. So I'm going to go and take a look at today's surface distance. So nine furlongs on the dirt. Okay, look at this horse's record. I mean, other than two races, one was he had trouble at the start, and the other one he was strong. He'd run in the money in all of those races. Okay, at nine furlongs on the dirt. And if you look at his Saratoga races, uh, he's second, third at this surface distance, third win. Okay, so, so this horse is suited for this surface and distance. He's suitable to this surface and distance. So you got a horse, when we go back again, he kind of fits, he fits on speed, fits on plot. He's a little bit low on class, but he's average. So he kind of fits. So he, so he fits on all those categories. Form cycle, we've proven that he kind of does well second off a layoff, and he's suitable to the distance and the surface and the track. I just think he's worth, it's 20 to one, this horse is just worth a consideration. Uh, that's that's the uh, horse that I, I think, again, in a race like this, why not? Uh, the number three was the other horse I talked about, another 21 shot. Don't don't think he has as much, but he just had, he does have that pace advantage we talked about in the plot. Uh, and also, the thing is with him, he's well below on speed. So that's a concern. But again, he's been running against better horses recently. Gets loose. You just never know. He's another horse you might want to consider. I think when you look at suitability-wise with him, the nine furlongs, it's a, a little bit of a different story. Uh, he, well, not really. I mean, he he, do, he he has run really well, actually, as nine furlongs. Just, I'm just a little concerned as he hold on. But again... Uh, this is pretty good. He's just, he just might be a little bit slow, but sometimes in these races, when you got these horses coming into the race with the form that they're coming into, uh, you know, why not give them a shot? Another horse that could outrun his odds at 21. So for me, two horses that you might want to look at considering, um, uh, they're, they're both 20 to one in the morning line. Okay. Let's go to the next race. Again, I don't have to go out. I don't have to leave. I just go to the next race. I'm here. I'm in the grid. If I want to go to the plot, I go to the plot. Uh, again, another red plot. It's a messy plot. And if you go to the surface and distance, you know, a couple of things that kind of stand out. The two, five, and six are the big squares in this race. So these, those are horses you really want to kind of look at closely. I thought the two had a little bit of a look. So that's, that's one horse. But I think the horse that kind of stood out to me a little bit more was the five. Let me go to him on the grid. When you kind of look at him, he's below on plot, but I, I would I wouldn't hold that against him. It's like it's just a weird distance. We just don't run that many races at 11 furlongs. Um but you know he's a square he's a horse that could finish. He's above on class, you know, average on speed. 
And here's the thing. I think he his last race would look like almost like a prep, ran really well. I just, huge close. You can see the extended comment. You see, when you see these little blue bubble things, you can see that you're going to get an extended comment when you hover over it. So that's just something. So, I mean, this is a horse that ran in, a, you know, uh, the QE2, which is a grade one race. Just, you know, it's just kind of a bad tactics. Wasn't the right race. They dropped them. Um, came back in the fairgrounds race was a long layoff, ran decently at B minus, and then he ran really well. I just think he might be coming into this race uh, sitting on a good effort. If you go back to his other race, which is about today's distance, 10 half furlongs at uh, Kentucky Downs in a stakes race, okay, this horse ran huge B plus, a covered up, found room leaving the turn, good stretch drive. Horse really finished up. I just think that this horse might be suited for the distance, I think this horse, from a form perspective, is coming into this race the right way. Uh, he doesn't need to be that far out like he was last time, uh, especially with the pace and the his longer distance. He just needs to kind of get some he needs to get covered up and make his run. I just think this horse uh, again at five to one is a legitimate um, horse to use in your exotics. Again, is another horse that. Um, just, just from a from a class perspective, is above the class. Again, I wouldn't concern myself with the plot. Two reasons: one, it's a red plot. Two, when you just kind of look at um, the size of his square, that's what you want. You want horses finishing and uh, eleven furlongs. It's going to be all about the trip. I think he's a legitimate uh, price in the morning line. And Aspen Grove, you know, just is okay. Just I think you know he's had trouble. He's got you know he's obviously a classy horse. You can see. He's above in class. Uh, he's above on speed. Just concerns about, you know, that price. I mean, that's really the big thing about him. So that's it. That's the Daily Double at uh, Saratoga. Check us out, uh, opticseq.com. And you can see the new platform. There's lots more in here. Again, if you want to look at some of the videos and some of the explanation stuff, just kind of go here. Green keywords have been really going good guns. So that's another thing to pay attention to. So thanks for listening and uh, enjoy the races.